welcome back now. Going from boom to bust, our next guest is all too familiar with the highs and the lows of business. Having lost the company, the Glen Cullen Group, which is in receivership with partner Bill Cullen during the recession, Jackie Lavin believes theirs could have been a different story, but for the banks, and is now leading the charge to get justice for small businesses. Jackie, you're very welcome to the programme. Thank you very Hi, much. Hi, Jackie. Great to be here. So just to, to give, I suppose, a bit of a, a, a thumbnail sketch of what happened here, you had uh, Ulster Bank and they set up this uh, sub-department, uh, which I suppose you could essentially call, it's called GRG. It was like they sold it as an intensive care unit uh, for businesses. So if your business was in a, a certain kind of state in the middle of the recession, mm -hmm. they'd take you in, they'd nurture you, they'd get you back on your feet and off you'd go again. How did your company come to be in this particular part of the bank? Well, in 2009-2010, in all companies in Ireland and probably around the world were experiencing cash flow problems. I mean, 2009 was probably the worst year uh, in history for the motor business. Mm -hmm. I think all businesses were halved. And, and, and likewise, in, the, in, the, in all retail businesses, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, halved or, or even, uh, even quartered in yeah. some cases. So a lot of it, everyone was, was experiencing cash flow difficulties. So uh, naturally, um, well, not naturally, but the bank um, then decided that they were going to try and bring in more securities, mm -hmm. you know, uh, um, in in in, uh, in terms of the loan, yeah. So they they gathered in all the properties, but what they did then in 2011, um, which was really at kind of more or less the end of the recession, mm -hmm. if you like, mm -hmm. because 2011 2012, uh, they started targeting companies because they had a huge big hole in their own finances uh, in the RBS group, which RBS was is the is the, um, the, parent, the parent company yeah, Royal of, of Scotland, Royal yeah. Bank of Scotland. Mm -hmm. They're the parent company of Ulster Bank, so they they had a big hole in their own finances to the tune of 26 billion. Mm. So they then instigated the uh, dash for cash strategy. And this is in the public domain. It's been, it's, you know, um, many, many programmes have been done about it on BBC and other, and other UK um, programmes. And they've had uh, whistleblowers who have come out and internal documents have been shown. So it's nothing that nobody, that, that, that's not out there, yeah. if you like. Uh, the dash for cash um, um, programme was that basically if there were companies whose loans were less than the value of their properties mm. they were targeted. Mm -hmm. So in our case, uh, our loan was 10 million mm. and our properties were worth five times that. Mm -hmm. So we were the perfect company to be taken, if you like. Yeah. But, they, but they, they targeted small and medium uh, businesses as well. Mm. Um, in, in the UK, probably, maybe some of the businesses were a lot bigger, but they also targeted small family businesses. So farmers, Same thing. dentists, you, you name it. They were targeted. Corner shops, yeah. you know, butchers, bakers, everything. Now, Jackie, yeah. the thing that, that, that I think is that the nub of this issue was when the, uh, the, the, the companies were brought into this scheme, it was to do with the loan-to-value ratio. So yes. your loan is mm -hmm. this, the value of your assets is it's this. It's much right? higher. Right. And obviously, because of the recession, values of properties had dropped. So they could, if they um, had valued your businesses at less or a, redu a reduced mm. level, um, suddenly claim you had breached your contract and therefore they could start um, getting more fees out of you, restructuring yes. your loans, increasing the interest rates, all that sort of thing. Yeah. But the, the, the key point here is that it was the bank themselves that valued the properties and it wasn't an independent third party. Of course it was. So there was, there was no third party involved. Sometimes they had just had drive-by uh, valuations. Mm. Uh, but the thing is, they did it, uh, they targeted the companies that had a lot of headroom, if you like, mm. between the loan and the value of the properties. Because all properties were obviously devalued yes. at that particular mm. time. Mm -hmm. So if your properties were worth 60 million at, in 2007, they might have been only worth 30 million or maybe 20 million. But still, there was still a huge amount of headroom between your, between your loan and the value of your properties. Mm -hmm. So it was basically a property grab mm -hmm. by the banks in order to shore up their own bank account uh, back in the UK. So what they did is they targeted companies, uh, grabbed the properties, uh, grabbed the company, closed down the company, uh, gave the properties over to a receiver who then sold them to maybe a competitor or whatever at mm -hmm. a knockdown price. Then the value of the loans, if there was anything left, was uh, um, sold off to a vulture fund, and now you're being pursued by the vulture fund. For the entire For the 100% of the loan. Yeah. And 100%. important to mention, Jackie, as well, mm. you'd been a customer of Ulster Bank since 1990 oh, and yes. never defaulted on Never defaulted, loan. never defaulted. Mm. But in the grab for cash strategy, and it's again, it's been revealed on, on the, this BBC uh, BuzzFeed programme, mm. it said, if the company has not defaulted, we can engineer one, mm. quote, unquote.
Yeah. Okay. So they actually well, engineered We did, we did contact them just mm. in the interest of balance this morning, Jackie. Um, they're not here, but they have given us a statement, a statement from Ulster Bank on the allegations. It reads, during the period 2008 to 2013, Ulster Bank granted extensive forbearance to the vast majority of the customers managed in GRG, which is the group that was set up. Uh, this reflected the primary goal of the bank to support customers who might return to viability when the recovery started to emerge. In line with the process underway in the UK, Ulster Bank is making the same supports available to our SME, small and medium-sized enterprise customers in the GRG group during that period. Ulster Bank strongly rejects any claims that businesses in GRG were artificially distressed by GRG and a number of independent reports have supported this conclusion. Ulster Bank did not have the facility to transfer loans to NAMA, unlike the covered banks at the time. Jackie, let me ask you a question on this now, right? Of the number of companies who went in Ireland into this GRG scheme, which was there at the intensive care to help and nurture the companies, how many came out of it? Well, 2,140 went in and less than 10 came out. So does that, does that speak for itself? Mm. Um, and those that came out, I know some of them uh, who, who actually uh, came out to normal banking afterwards. And the reason they couldn't, their properties couldn't be taken is because the properties were maybe half finished. There were apartment blocks, you know, mm. that were sort of half done, uh, bits of houses that had to be completed and all that kind of thing. So th they basically couldn't take the properties because they weren't saleable at the time. Yeah. Whereas ours were prime properties mm -hmm. in prime locations ready for sale straight away. Jackie, th th there has been, I suppose, or has there been, let me ask a question rather than making a statement. Uh, an element of Schadenfreude about what has happened uh, to, to, to your group and to to others, kind of you know, delight in other people's misery. Is that passing? Is that gone? I mean, how, why is it now this story has actually come to prominence? I think there's been a bit of a change in the conversation recently because this is not just oh uh, oh the Jackie and Bill story again and again. Oh my God, tough. You know, mm. it's a pity type of thing, but mm. tough. Let's all move on. Uh, I think the story is slowly getting out there that this is not about. Us, this is about thousands of people mm. and thousands of people who lost their jobs. Mm. Thousands of small and medium family businesses that were targeted and that were just literally disassembled, uh, shut down, sold on to maybe a vulture fund or a competitor or just closed, sold on to the vulture fund and the vulture fund is now pursuing them. And these people who lost their jobs had consequential, obviously, damage. Naturally, they couldn't pay their mortgage, they couldn't pay their bills. Mm -hmm. So an awful lot of those people... I'm here to tell the tale. You are, so and you've I'm survived good. it. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell the but tale. But what about the businesses, Jackie, who have gone into mm. receivership? If there is compensation out of this... What, what, what happens? Where, where will the compensation go? Will it go back to the banks? The compensation is an absolute joke. First of all, you're, you're supposed to complain to the bank. Uh, themselves, okay. So there's no independent inquiry. Uh, Central Bank are not, uh, you know, uh, having any independent inquiry, even though I've called for one in the Iraq uh, Finance mm -hmm. Committee. Nothing has happened. Now, in, um, in, in, in the UK, there was. Sorry, Jackie. Go you. ahead. No. no, no, sorry. But about this compensation yes. scheme, um, they're supposed to have put. They have uh, put aside 400 million for 12,000 customers in the UK. Mm. 300 million of that is going to go on admin. So it's going to be 100 million left. So if anybody is good at maths, divide the 100 million between 12,000 customers. And now, because they were being hauled in in front of the Finance Committee, the Oireachtas Finance Committee, they said, oh, well, the Irish can, can sort of dip into that fund as well. Mm. So now we're dividing it by 14,000 customers. Mm -hmm. uh, can you imagine? I think we'll probably get about eight grand each. And, but the eight grand or whatever the amount would be, would go back to the receiver. Mm. So it would actually go to, back to themselves. So they'll be paying themselves back. The whole thing is a farce. Now, in, in the UK, there has been talk of uh, bringing in the serious fraud squad yes. to, to, to examine the activities <clears throat> of RBS over that period. Um, is the same thing happening here? Should the same thing happen here? Well, it's a question I was asked across the floor by the chairman of the Joint Iraq this committee. And I said, absolutely, of course, the fraud squad should be brought in. But not alone is it ignored by the, um, the whole scandal, which is a massive scandal and mm. affecting a huge number of people here. It's been ignored by the central bank, financial regulator, uh, the government, um, the DPP, the Gardaí, and definitely. So, so in, there's nothing in, happening, in, in other words. In essence, what mm. needs to happen? Like, so if, mm. if you had to say a five-point plan or template plan yeah. to, to, to move this story on, what, what would it uh, be in a nutshell? Well, we need an independent inquiry, first mm -hmm. of all, not an in inquiry by themselves. Independent inquiry by the central bank. Central bank to do their job and haul in the bank and... and, and, and 
give an account, get them to give an account of, of the way they distressed customers. Um, access to justice is a huge issue for an awful lot of people. You don't have the money. The bank can run you in and out no. of, that, of the court day in, day out, 50, 60, 70 times, and hopefully you'll give up. Yeah. So they're hoping you'll give up, and then, or they'll run you out of time, mm -hmm. because after seven years, you're time barred anyway. Mm -hmm. So most people have no access to justice, no, they, they can't afford the, uh, the legal fees. Also, they're down, they're, they're down, they're beaten, they're down. Mm -hmm. As I say, I'm here telling the story. An awful lot of people suffering from mental illness, a lot of people are not and here. And much smaller businesses, you say, But as a you lot say, of people Jackie. commit suicide, mm -hmm. Anna. A lot of uh, families are devastated. They're homeless and they're just bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So where do you Jackie, go from there? Jackie, we cannot let you go without asking you this question because I know viewers are watching <laughs> this morning and they're thinking it and having conversations in kitchens around the what country. Is You're suing Bill, but this is part of, of a business <laughs> plan rather than a personal one. Poor Would that Bill. be fair to say? Poor Bill, poor, poor Bill. Bill gets poor a very Bill. rough time. Terrible. He's getting a rough deal. <laughs> <laughs> After 30 odd years and he's still hanging in there is yeah. dreadful, isn't it? You're still an item? It's, oh, <laughs> very it's, much it's so. It's business, it's business. Uh, okay. It's business. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's being sued as the 100% shareholder of the company. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming in, Jackie. Pleasure. And best of luck. Thank you.